Um, thank you for joining us this evening. Welcome to our webinar. A uh, few logistics here with Zoom before we get started. Um, in the upper right-hand corner, there's going to be a view button. And if you go to speaker view, that's really the best way to view the webinar today. What it's gonna do is give you like a side-by-side -side of Dr. Huey um, and the slides. Your camera is off, like I've mentioned, um, and you're muted for the webinar. Um, there is a question and answer box in the bottom of the toolbar of Zoom. So feel free to go ask your questions at any time throughout the webinar, and we'll make sure that Dr. Huey gets those answered. You can also raise your hand and I can unmute you um, so you can chat and ask your question that way as well. So feel free to um, ask your questions throughout the webinar, uh, and we'll get those answered um, as we can take a break uh, to, to answer the questions. A little bit of details on the webinar is, of course, as you all know, we're going to focus on the Flex Tap today. Um, so getting started and growing your dental sleep practice with Dr. Jason Huey and Airway Management. Um, live, live attendees will be receiving a promo code of the Flex Tap after the webinar, so make sure you stay around for that at the end. It's a pretty good one. Uh, I'll pass it over to Frank here to talk a little bit about True Function for those new faces on here uh, before we get started with the webinar. Chris, thank you. Everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, it truly is uh, quite a pleasure, and we appreciate Dr. Huey joining us today for this presentation. Um, we'll all get to learn a little bit more about the FlexTap and how it works. And just a little bit about uh, True Function. Um, I started this thing back in 1999, so we are just about almost at our 25th year. We're excited to go into that uh, next year. And, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more in the, uh, about what's coming uh, in 2024, but we're super excited and grateful, you know, to, to be around this long and, and uh, to continue to, to be going strong. Um, so again, we started 1999, and uh, as I was telling Dr. Hugh, we started, uh, well, I started as an orthodontic, basically, technician. I started previous, I was a dental assistant, and I started an orthodontic technician making TMJ splints, working out of a, a office of, a, of my employer, a dentist at the time, and uh, you know, got some opportunities to learn a tremendous amount about uh, not just the laboratory, but having that clinical experience really helped me to become uh, uh, what, I, what uh, I think would be a really good technician. And, and, and I really uh, got a lot of well-rounded knowledge. Uh, as we grew and evolved, we, we went into becoming a full-service laboratory over the years. And um, later on, we decided, you know what, what are we great at? What is our passion? And, uh, you know, what did we do best? Uh, so we decided to refocus just to doing sleep and TMJ. So that's all we do. And, uh, again, you know, we've been a partner with Airway Labs for probably 15 years now. We're, you know, we're happy to be in that partnership. And, uh, you know, we're excited about the flex tab and happy to have you here. So uh, welcome again and uh, enjoy the webinar. Thank you. All righty. Well, we always enjoy getting the opportunity to work with Dr. Huey. He's such a great resource for growing your sleep practice. And we're excited to have him join us this evening. Uh, Dr. Huey is a pri has a private practice in McKinney, Texas, limited to training TMJ disorders and obstructive sleep apnea. He takes pride in helping his patients achieve wellness in their overall health. He understands how closely the mouth and sleep can affect other issues within the body. His mission is to also help educate colleagues and spread awareness in order to better serve the staff the underdiagnosed population in need. Dr. Huey serves as a clinical investigator for the Sleep Research Program and an adjunct professor at the Texas A&M College of Dentistry. He's a master of the Academy of General Dentistry, a diplomat of the American Board of Dental Sleep Medicine, and a diplomat of the American Board of Craniofacial Sleep Medicine, as well as a fellow of the American Academy of Craniofacial Pain. So Dr. Huey, thank you for joining us today. I'll pass it over to you to get started for the webinar. Well, thank you, Trish, for the introduction. Uh, welcome, everyone. I'm glad to see uh, we have a good number of people here tonight. Um, it's always impressive to see people taking time away from I guess their evenings. I'm sure uh, some of us probably have families that we want to be with. Um, so this will be a fairly short presentation, and we'll kind of talk about the flex tap. And um, let's get started. I do want to thank uh, Airway and True Function for having me on this to speak about the flex tap. Um, my hope is that as we get through this webinar, 
that we start to see some of the differences between the flex tap compared to other appliances that are currently on the market. Um, towards the end, um, I'd like to share some of my workflows and how I use a flex tap in my practice um, to kind of maximize efficiency and share time. So as Trish said, I do have a uh, sleep apnea practice. Um, the practice is limited to mainly treating sleep apnea and TMJ patients. It's very nice because we really don't even have any hand pieces in there. We don't drill on teeth. Um, we don't even have an autoclave in there because there's really nothing to sterilize. Everything we use is disposables. I do also have a dental restorative practice um, in Allen, Texas, where I still do bread and butter dentistry. And then I do spend some time at the dental school where I'm mainly there on Fridays doing research uh, for sleep apnea on some of the studies we have there. This is my family here. So this is kind of my why. These are my, kind of my three bosses in the family. They all just boss me around. I was telling Frank and Trisha earlier that I was rushing to get home from work and I had to bathe these two kids and feed them. And then now I'm in my bedroom sitting in the corner with the door locked. Um, but my five-year-old right here, Oliver, he does know how to pick the lock. So you see a kid running around here screaming, that's probably going to be him. So I'm going to apologize in advance if that happens. So objective today, we're really just going to talk about the flex tap, why I believe it's a superior appliance uh, for some sleep apnea patients, not all of them. Um, and we'll learn about how flex tap can work in your practice. And we'll talk about some of those efficient processes for delivering and treating some of these sleep apnea patients with flex tap today. So a little bit about me, I graduated from dental school uh, in Dallas back when it was called Baylor College of Dentistry. Uh, my journey initially was interested in occlusion. I took a lot of courses at the Panky Institute. Uh, and we talked about, you know, equilibrating people, getting them from, you know, bites like this where they hit heavy in the back to getting even contacts um, across all the teeth. Made a lot of TMJ splints, a lot of uh, night guards to help patients with, you know, headaches and face pain and jaw pain. And over the years, I noticed that some people improve and some people won't. And the ones that did improve, they always never quite improved 100% of the way. And as I continued my continuing education journey and learn more about TMJ, that gradually led me into sleep. And I started to realize that all these patients, they all had one thing in common aside from the bruxism and it was that they all also snored or they had a a variability of sleep symptoms whether they're tired waking up waking up unrefreshed um pretty much all the sleep apnea symptoms we see today that a lot of the ce courses are teaching um and i was already at the dental school at this time and i had the opportunity to meet keith thornton um i call him the tap tap father he's the inventor of all the tap appliances and he's been part of our research team as well and been a great mentor. And I've just learned a lot from him, um, just from doing a lot of these research studies with him. And he's really a great mentor. And I think he's in his late seventies now. Um, he, every year he just seems to keep looking better and better, but he's always at all the conferences for the sleep, for sleep apnea. So if you get a chance to meet him, talk to him and pick his brain, he's definitely a great friend to have and great resource to have. If you ever have any trouble with any of your sleep apnea cases, Frank as well. Frank's a great resource as well with True Function. Uh, his background also comes from a TMJ practice. And so a lot of these patients that might develop pain, he's always been a great resource to call and kind of work through some of these patients to figure out, did we pick the right appliance or what might have went wrong with some of these appliances that uh, led to the patient having pain. So this was me back in 2014. This is my business partner right here. I think he's on here tonight too. Um, he told me he was just going to stare at the video the whole entire time, but fortunately the video was turned off. So thank you, Trish. But this was us in 2014. This was our first CE course. This was us taking a home sleep study home. And, and then, um, part of my story is I used to be tired all the time, all throughout dental school, all throughout college. I'd fall asleep in class. I'd even fall asleep driving most of the time. I was drinking a ton of coffee all the time. And then once I started to learn about sleep apnea and finally got treated, this is me with a MyTap, um, I virtually eliminated the need for coffee and I was no longer falling asleep driving. I could focus a lot better. And then I had these two little rascals and now I'm back to sleeping all the time and tired all the time and drinking coffee all the time. Um, and so as we kind of get into what the flex tap is about, um, I'm not sure what everybody's experience level is with sleep apnea and treating um, patients with, with oral appliances. So I did want to just cover some basics. 
Um, your, your normal patients essentially always have an open airway during sleep. Uh, your apnea patients, what's happening during sleep is sometimes you have soft tissue that collapses, muscle tone that collapses. But bottom line is in the back of the throat, you get some blockage of airflow here. And ultimately, what you're trying to do to treat these patients is you're trying to open up the airway back here. So whether it's a CPAP machine, you're just blowing things open, a or appliance, you're just moving the mandible forward to manipulate the soft tissue to prevent this from collapsing. You'll see this little analogy I have up here. How I describe sleep apnea to patients is it's really kind of like a water bottle size opening. Uh, when you blow air through the top, you would hear like a whistling sound. Uh, the sound you hear is resistance. Um, if you blow the same amount of air in a open bucket, you wouldn't hear that sound because there's no resistance of airflow. So a lot of times when I talk to patients about what sleep apnea is, I really tie it to their snoring. Uh, if you think picture snoring when your patient's sitting awake with you, they're typically not snoring in the chair because they're awake. And so I tell them if your windpipe is this size, you're currently not snoring. So you know you're getting 100% airflow. As you go to sleep at night, if this gets 10% smaller, now you hear a little bit of 50%, you hear the 100% if you're completely blocked off, this is where you have no airflow. Imagine like a cap on the water bottle that you're blowing air through. You don't hear any sound because no air goes in or out. But these are the people that hold their breath. Let's say the last 30, 40 seconds, it's completely silent. When they finally move around and this opens up, these are the people that go, <gasps> or they choke, they choke in their sleep or they gasp for air because they just effectively held their breath for a long period of time. So what I'm telling them is essentially if you have a water bottle size airway, you're really trying to treat it by making it big enough so that you hear no noise. And then we start talking about different types of oral appliances that are available. So here's just a quick picture that I kind of found on Google. These are multiple different types of appliance designs. I always tell the patients, it really doesn't matter what appliance you pick, but they all do the same thing. They're all roughly holding your jaw forward so that you can breathe better and prevent your tongue from falling back at night and changing muscle tone. For the purpose of the day, we're really talking about the flex tap. I do believe this flex tap is a little bit different than other appliances. Um, and so we'll get into this and kind of talk about some of the features of flex tap. Before we get into that, these are kind of all the tap appliances I've used in the past. You have one here on the top. The top two on the top left is the dream tap, where you have an adjustment mechanism on the front that sticks out of the mouth. There is a bar on the bottom, and then there is a hook that engages that bar. And then on the top right here is the dream tap. Essentially, they kind of swap the connection hardware, uh, or sorry, the top right is the tap three. Um, similar design, except you have an Allen key to turn the appliance. And on the bottom left is a dream tap they came out with a couple of years ago. Virtually the same design, they're all hooked in the front, but they move the hardware to the front of the appliance um, to try to create more tongue space. And the bottom two here on the right side are the flex taps. And the flex taps, kind of the same concept as a dream tap, except they actually moved everything to the front. So you'll see here, this virtually looks like almost like two thicker Essex retainers or two hard soft night guards, but lots of tongue space here. So the whole purpose of the flex tab was really to try to get all the hardware out of the tongue side and create as much room in the box, so to speak, as possible for the tongue so that you don't have to advance the jaw as, as forward as say like a tap three or a tap one where you actually have thickness or material that kind of blocks some of the soft tissue. And so we've done a lot of research with the flex tap and, and the my tap, which is kind of like a, the temporary design that we'll kind of go over. Um, and some of the research has just shown that this appliance has worked uh, very effectively. And so the, the flex tap has something called vertex technology. And that technology is really just in this little bar here where it's kind of angled at 45 degree. What's really nice about this is as you adjust this appliance, so there's a thumb screw right here that you can turn, the, the, you turn it to the right like you're tightening a screw, and the more you turn it, the further forward your jaw goes. But in most appliances, as you, as you adjust the appliance, you're typically mostly just getting a horizontal movement. Because this is connected in the front and angled, as you adjust the appliance, you're actually getting a down and forward movement. So you're getting kind of both vertical and horizontal movement at the same time, virtually creating more space than just a one-dimensional movement. And because of this, your patients generally need less protrusion. 
um, which generally helps with any joint pain or discomfort or forces on, on the teeth or the jaw. One of the other things that the FlexTap has is also a mouth shield. Um, the mouth shield, what they advertise that it essentially it's a silicone sleeve that goes over this post and covers any opening um, from the mouth to the external environment. So this is very similar to mouth taping. If any of you have ever you know, followed some of these sleep groups, a lot of people are talking about nasal breathing and mouth taping. You look up YouTube videos on mouth taping and there's lots of people that are preaching about mouth taping to kind of promote yourself to breathe through the nose. Well, the FlexTap has something that comes standard that can seal, seal off any openings and this can help kind of promote nasal breathing. It helps prevent your dry mouth. It also helps prevent excessive saliva. Uh, and some of the research we've done at the dental school, we've actually shown that when you compare appliances with the mouth shield versus without a mouth shield, you actually see pretty significant differences um, in reduction of AHI and reduction in some of their baseline symptoms. Um, and most patients we see, they, they say that this feels a lot more comfortable because the shield is kind of silicone that kind of covers any rough areas or sharp areas that might kind of irritate the lip. And so I did a quick Google search on mouth taping and you'll see these are all the things that pop up. They sell all sorts of tape. Uh, I even have some patients that wear appliances that not the flex type, but they wear other appliances that don't have a mouth shield. And these patients will actually tape their tape their mouth over their appliance. Um, once once they put the appliance in, then they also mouth tape. And I've looked at some of the costs of some of these tapes, and some of them are like two dollars a piece. Um, so with the flex type having a mouth shield uh, makes it very nice to where these patients aren't having to spend two dollars every night um, just to buy tape. And I think that Dr. Thornton actually has the patent on this mouth shield. So currently the TAP is the only appliance out there that has um, a custom mouth shield to promote nasal breathing. And here's a little video from TAP that shows how this sleeve kind of slips on. I'll let that run one more time there. And so you'll see once they adjust the appliance, the silicone sleeve just slips over it and this actually tucks inside the cheeks. And so you look at the appliances out there, you know, they, you know, they have certain appliances, they can cut notches to, or they can put little ball clasps that you can put elastics. Um, these elastics really just, you can still mouth breathe to a degree. They really promote uh, mouth closure um, over like fully nasal breathing. Um, so, uh, so we will do this sometimes when we use appliances like these, where we'll just put elastics going to help, help the patient kind of keep their mouth closed, but you'll see there's still an opening here that they can still technically breathe through their mouth. So generally you don't see as grave an outcome compared to if you tape or now if you have this mouth shield, you can seal everything off and get better treatment and outcomes. And so one of the things I threw in here is, you know, Google and nasal breathing benefits. Um, I always trust everything that Google tells me. Um, that's what most of my patients do as well. And you'll see that nasal breathing produces something called nitric oxide. So nitric oxide is the same thing you see in Viagra, promote, promotes uh, vasodilation, increases blood flow. But one thing the nitric oxide also does is um, it's kind of antimicrobial. Um, and here's a study that kind of showed, you know, this was kind of during COVID, they were trying to figure out what actually kills coronaviruses, COVID-19, and COVID-19 is a SARS virus. And this study talks about how nitric oxide inhibits the replication of SARS viruses. So I myself haven't gotten COVID um, that I know of at least, but I know several people that have never gotten it as well. I have employees that have uh, spouses that got COVID, but then my employees never got it. And so I think some people are just more susceptible to getting it and my theory is that these are the mouth breathers. Um, when you're mouth breathing, there's no nitric oxide release. Um, so you're probably seeing more uh, replication of any COVID viruses or SARS viruses versus the people that are nasal breathing. So I'm a big fan of promoting uh, nasal breathing because um, I think overall it gets everybody healthier. One of my mentors always said that your mouth is for eating, your nose is for breathing. Um, so. So I always try to get my patients to breathe through their nose anytime it's possible. Um, used to be tough because I would, I would kind of cherry pick my patients on who I would tell to mouth tape because um, mouth tape isn't really an exact science yet. Uh, there, I, I've heard of stories where I think it was in Arizona where there was a pediatric dentist that 
that told a mom uh, that they should mouth tape their kid, but they didn't specify what type of mouth tape. Well, the mom used duct tape and the kid had an asthma attack and actually unfortunately passed away. So I've always said I try not to tell patients to mouth tape. But now that they have something that's approved uh, with the flex tap that actually seals over the appliance, um, that's really not a concern anymore that I don't have to tell patients to tape anymore. And so one of the things about the flex tap is that this, a lot, this, this liner, it's a thermocryl liner. It's actually thinner compared to some of the other tap appliances. Um, and it's also more durable. This stuff is pretty, pretty hard. It's not your typical uh, thermal plastic type material. You think about those, uh, those hard soft night guards that we learned in dental school that if you overheat them, they distort um, pretty significantly. You don't really see that with this type of material, um, but because the appliance is connected, you do want decent retention over the teeth. Um, I always check this by when, it, when I deliver the appliance, but I always have the patient open a little bit, uh, maybe like 20, 30% of the way, just to make sure that the trays aren't popping off the teeth because um, they do pop off. I, I usually try to send that back to try to get them tighter um, and so I always just a little pearl. I always ask for these to be on the slightly on the tight side because it's easier to adjust a tight appliance than it is to get a loose appliance tighter. Um, so when you, they say when you deliver these, use warm water. You really just dip it in for like three to five seconds, and then you're letting the patient try it in the mouth, and then you're you're adjusting the retention from there. If it's too tight, you can kind of dip it in the water a little bit longer, and that generally kind of helps kind of loosen everything up for the patient. And so, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I, the TAP appliances, doing research with Keith, he's done so much research. Um, that's kind of everything he kind of puts out, everything he invents. It's always kind of based on research. And so, when you're looking at those TAP appliances, they're virtually really just getting better and better every year. And the mouth shield was actually something we researched at the dental school um, where we compare, we actually used the MyTAP. Uh, to kind of compare the differences when the patients used the mouth shield versus when they didn't. And so here's a little study that, um, that TAP actually sent over to me earlier this week. They haven't published this yet, but this study was 20 patients with an initial average AHI of 25. So that puts them at kind of roughly, you know, the high end of moderate obstructive sleep apnea. Anything over 30 is considered severe they use, these patients will use a dream tap at first and they're able to decrease the AHI down to 14. So you get maybe a little under 50% improvement with a dream tap. And then they transition these patients to a flex tap and it decreased their AHI even further all the, way, all the way down to seven, which is considered the low end of mild sleep apnea. Anything under five, I, I think most physicians would consider that successful. Even at age at 25 down to seven, I would say is pretty remarkable. But they looked at the differences on why one appliance did better than the other. And then they really boiled down to the flex tab had a mouth shield and the flex tab was also thinner. And with the vertex technology, you really had much greater opening when you're able to advance horizontally and vertically. And so it's, I always kind of laugh and I always tell Keith, that was, you're, you're comparing your own appliances. You're almost trying to discourage people to get dream taps. Um, and he kind of says the flex tap is, is the current best one. And I think he still makes all the other tap appliances because there are still a lot of doctors that like using those. And that's kind of where their comfort level is. And the truth is that they all, they all work. And so they still have an AM aligner with the flex tap. I think all their tap appliances, they've transitioned to this new thermocryl type of AM aligner. Um, it virtually works the same as the previous AM aligners if anyone's used them, but you're really heating these um, for roughly, I think it takes me about three to four minutes to kind of heat these up. And then I place it in the mouth and have them bite in the normal position where the back teeth are touching. And then once this sets, this is just a bite repositioner for, for the patients to insert in their mouth every morning to help reset their bites. And this comes standard with every tap appliance too. And so kind of as a recap, uh, these key features of the flex tap, there's really faster appointment delivery times. Um, there's no hooks that you got to change out. There's really no extra tools you have to adjust. Um, this is really similar to delivering two hard soft night guards, um, except that they're connected. Uh, so if you hire a new assistant that's been used to delivering night guards, there's not a very steep learning curve to this. 
there's just a thumb screw that you turn and and I just tell them righty tighty, lefty loosey, fairly easy to remember. The beauty about these flex taps is there's also no metal. Um, so a lot, and this is also a Medicare approved appliance with a standard three year warranty. Um, this has been really nice for my Medicare patients because prior to the flex tap being available, I was making mostly mostly dream taps and herbs appliances for my Medicare patients. Um, I, I was doing that because in Texas, we do have one of the lower reimbursements. Um, so I know there are other appliances with no metal, um, but the lab cost of some of those appliances really wasn't possible for, for being a participating provider in Texas with Medicare. But when the flex tap came out, it really just appeased the patient's concerns about having any metal in there. And you don't, you really don't have any hardware. And, and I really think the flex tap looks a lot less scary than, than some of them, like a Herbst appliance. Um, but there certainly are still some cases I'll use Herbst appliances. It just really depends on the patient's dentitions and kind of what their expectations are. But because of the vertex technology on the flex tap, um, as you're turning that screw, again, you go down and forward you really don't need a bite registration with this too. So from a fabrication standpoint, all you have to send to the lab is really just an upper and lower impression, whether that's analog, whether that's a digital impression, I think true function in most labs accept both of those, um, but you don't need a bite registration. The other thing that's awesome about this is that there's a, there's a full 19 millimeters range of motion on this, which is amazing. And I'll talk in a second about how this is my go-to appliance for some of my severe cases. Um, and again, it comes on the mouth shield, that's standard. You don't have to pay extra for that. This is also the lowest price uh, tap currently. It costs less than the Dream Tap or the Tap 3. And so there's just a lot of features on this Flex Tap that I've been very excited about um, and incorporating into my practice over the last year. Dr. Huey, we have a, a quick question. Yeah. Um, when testing the difference between or the devices for efficacy, what if there has been a shield attached to the DT? Trying to figure out if it is the mouth a hold is making the difference. I don't think that study if they that if they used the mouth shield on the dream tap, I think they just compared the standard dream tap to the flex tap with I guess the standard feature of the flex tap, which is with basically the dream tap without a mouth shield comparing it to flex tap with the mouth shield. So I hope that answers that question. Um, it, it uh, We have another one actually. Um, during yep. early COVID, I made my wife a my tap because I didn't treat her as a real patient. She developed a posterior open bite. She includes on 21, 28, 29, and then 22 through 27, any suggestion? Um, so the studies that I've read, when you have these posterior open bites, depending on how, how soon that's, that's occurred, if it's been more than like three months, four months, it, it's likely a permanent change. And sometimes you have to go through orthodontics to, to fix that. Um, some of the studies that I've seen that they, they talk about this bite change happens like 20% of the time. And th there's two different theories on it. A, a lot of people, my business partner included, believes that it's it's a muscular change, and 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 they'll believe in using these AM aligners to realign the bite every morning. I'm on the camp that believes that whether you use AM aligner or not, it's the change is going to happen if you're in that 20% category. Um, and what I think is happening is that you're actually getting um, you're getting condylar remodeling. So these are in my what I'm thinking is happening is that these are patients that are before they see you, before they get to sleep out and treated, they've been acutely clenching and grinding in recent years um, significantly to where you're having some degree of acute arthritis or flattening of the jaw joints. And then when you overnight hold the jaw down and forward with a sleep appliance, whether it's a my tap, flex tap, dream tap, doesn't matter. You're holding the jaw down and forward, so you're decompressing the jaw joint. And over time, you'll see that joint remodel. So if it was flat and compressed and squished all the time, as that joint kind of heals and gets rounder, so to speak, now when the patient tries to close their jaw, their jaw doesn't go all the way back as it used to. So you're slightly down and forward with this posterior open bite. Um, I don't think that there's really a way to reverse it. You know, some practitioners will make these AM aligners and have the patient clench and squeeze into it. I kind of think you might do more harm than good if you try to do that aggressively. 
I think at that point, you're probably either you could do composite onlays or porcelain onlays to kind of close up that bite, depending on how significant it is. But if it's significant enough, you may be looking at um, orthodontics to pull the teeth back together. Um, when I see these changes, which I don't very often, I see maybe, maybe like four, three or four a year. Most of these patients, um, they're okay with it um, because they're sleeping significantly better. Um, and if they're not okay with it, I usually tell them you should consider trying a CPAP machine and you can't really wear this appliance anymore. And most people, most people will say, well, I couldn't wear the CPAP to begin with. And they just keep wearing the appliance. Um, so I, that's kind of my long winded answer to answer that. Um, I don't think there's a way to fix it other than restoratively. And then there's another question here that says, can the vertical opening be adjusted or specified? Yeah, you know, Frank was asking me this earlier. Um, even though the lab doesn't need a bite registration, if you wanted the appliance to be fabricated a certain vertical for the initial position, you can certainly take a bite and ask the lab to use it. Um, so, so whether you're taking like a, you know, taps are traditionally six millimeter verticals, um, depending on your training, if you're taking eight millimeters or 10 millimeter verticals or phonetic bites, you can, you can take that vertical at whatever position you want. And then you can ask the lab to kind of set the appliance at that initial position. Um, but I, I personally, you know, I, I've taken most courses to kind of see, you know, different, you know, schools of thought on treating the sleep apnea, sleep apnea patients. And, your flex tab really opens the vertical as you turn it. Um, so I've always just, um, I say I'm a lazy dentist. I, I just, I just skip the bite registration and I send it in without it. Um, I was talking to Frank and he asked if there's times where I do take them. And there are certain times that I do take a bite registration for the flex tab. And that's, if you see, um, you know, the patient's protrusive pathway, if they, you know, if they don't go straight, they go to the side or they go left and right. I'm usually taking a bite record in those cases so that the lab can see what direction the patient's moving and kind of fabricate the appliance to take that into consideration. Um, that's probably the only time I take a bite record. Um, I rarely take one because I want the vertical taller because the flex tap automatically adjusts for that anyways. So next question is, so should we make all patients aware of the possibility of a bite change before treatment? Well, yeah, that's absolutely an informed consent. That's probably the only side effect that I emphasize um, for my patients because that's really the only thing that can be permanent. Um, everything else, in my opinion, is short term, which is going to sore jaw joints, sore teeth, salivation. Um, so I really don't emphasize those because that's only in the first week or two that people experience that. But the bite change, I always point it out um, just so that they're aware of it. I make them sign for it. I make them initial for it. And then um, if they're scared of the bite change, I tell them you could try CPAP first. But there are CPAP studies that showed bite changes too, which is no one talks about it because the CPAP machine doesn't go in the mouth. Um, you tend to see flaring, flaring of the anterior teeth with CPAP because you know, these are your, your front teeth. You're seeing constant pressure pushing the tongue on the uh, lingual sides of the anterior teeth. So the more severe the sleep apnea patient, you're kind of pushing these teeth facially with that CPAP pressure and the tongue pressure. Um, but most people just don't think that that's caused by the CPAP machine. So do you have anything to add, Frank? Uh, yes, sir. You know, if, if I may, um, I just wanted to comment, Dr. Huey, if, if okay, um, <clears throat> from from what I hear from other clinicians is, uh, you know, sleep apnea, of course, is a medical condition. So you're teaching, you're, you're treating the patient holistically more from a medical side of things. And, uh, you know, as dental clinicians, you've all been trained to be extremely precise about what you do. And, you know, we're looking at bites and teeth and occlusion and everything has to be perfect. Uh, but now with oral devices, I mean, it is one of the side effects with pretty much any oral device. Uh, as you mentioned with CPAP, uh, you know, I've heard of stories as well of tooth movement. Um, the fact is that at the end of the day, you know, if you're treating patients, uh, with uh, sleep apnea or airway issues is, you know, weighing the pros and cons, right? Uh, do I get oxygen? Do I breathe? What's my quality of life? And, you know, yes, you know, there might be bite changes. And and as you mentioned, that's where the informed consent comes in. Yeah, it's just, it's, 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 a, it's just a shift in that, in that paradigm. 
Yeah, and, and I always point out to, you know, if you look at these drug commercials or pharmaceutical commercials, you know, they'll list all the benefits for this hypertensive drug. And then there's like a whole like three three minute sentence about all the side effects they can cause. And and I always tell the patients the reality is that um, I wish we were all like genetically like perfect with no diseases, perfectly healthy, never made a bad choice in life. But the reality is that we're going to have certain diseases and ultimately you have to help the patients assess the benefits versus the risks. Um, now, what, the only time I'm scared of a bite change on a patient is if that patient just had a full mouth rehab. They just spent $40,000 on a bunch of crowns that fixed all their teeth and that dentist calibrated their bite very specifically. And now I put some, you know, $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 sleep appliance in there that potentially messes up their $40,000 worth of dentistry. That's where I really emphasize that they should try a CPAP machine first because I want to know that the CPAP failed regardless of how bad their sleep apnea was before I put something that can mess up their dentistry. Um, that's the only time I really emphasize that you really should consider a CPAP machine first. Um, and I probably emphasize that more than most because I ultimately, I don't want the patient to be upset with me. Um, I have all, I'm a big believer in if you deliver all information ahead of time, it's not going to look like you're making excuses whenever bad things happen. And the longer you do this, you're going to see bad things happen. I mean, it happens to all of us. Okay, so let's keep moving forward. There's no other questions and great questions. So feel free to keep them coming. And so, so recap, Vertex technology, you're, you're, adva you're advancing kind of vertically and horizontally as you protrude the mandible. FlexTap comes with a mouth shield to promote nasal breathing and their new thermocrotal liner is thinner than some of their other um, tap appliances. So another advantage there to create more room for the tongue to treat these sleep apnea patients. And a little bit about kind of the FlexTap workflow. Um, this is kind of how, when I recommend, you know, when I talk to dental students about treating sleep apnea, this is kind of how I do it. And it's how I found to be the most, um, I guess the easiest for the patients from a time perspective and also a financial perspective. Because when these patients walk in, they have a sleep, they have a sleep study that shows a baseline sleep apnea status, you know, how bad the sleep apnea is. But when you're adjusting their appliances, how do you really measure how well they're doing? Um, I use a phone app called Snore Lab. You could also do multiple sleep studies to evaluate if that position is accurate, but I, but that tends to cost money, it tends to cost time. And a lot of times the patients don't want to go to their sleep positions to get multiple sleep studies. And at some point, medical insurance stops paying for these sleep studies. So I always try to do just one sleep study at the end. And what I do is I get them fitted for the, for the flex tap. I get their jaw position adjusted to what's comfortable. I typically start somewhere um, kind of 30, 35% protrusion. I tend to be more conservative to make sure that that feels comfortable on night one. And then what I tell them to do is to download this phone app called Snore Lab. And essentially, this is an app that just measures snoring. Strictly audio. I say sleep in a room by yourself and wear this appliance. And when you wake up, if you can see that you're snoring, you would want to turn this screw or adjust your mandible forward slightly. I say turn three turns. They turn three turns, you snore lab again. If they still snore, do three turns. If they still snore, do three turns. And I say when they don't snore, don't turn it anymore. But record a couple of more nights to make sure you're consistently not snoring. And most of the time when these patients come back, if they actually record their first follow-up, they already found the therapeutic position. And now I can ask them, hey, can you wear this every night? Are you having any problems? If they're wearing every night, they're not having any problems. I can already send them back to their sleep position and the sleep physician can order a sleep study if they choose to do so. But at that point, you already tested that consistent there's no snoring. So mostly sleep physicians do the sleep study. It's going to come back with either very little sleep apnea or no sleep apnea at all. And then your doctors are happy because you got this patient treated in less than a month and the patient's already happy because they're feeling better than no longer snoring. Um, and when you do this, of course, you know, with FlexTab, use the AM aligner, tell them to use to minimize any bite changes. Um, and again, for me, it's really to identify if there's any bite changes because they can fit in their aligners. There probably hasn't been anything that's changed. 
And then most importantly, you have to follow up with these patients to make sure they're actually doing better. Otherwise, they go back to the sleep physician and the sleep, physician, sleep doc does a sleep study and it still shows sleep apnea. Then the sleep doc doesn't think you are treating the patients as effectively and they might refer them to someone else um, in, the, in the future. Uh, I think there's another question here. Um, nope, that was not a question. Yeah. Uh, yep, there is one. Uh, uh, can the yeah. flex cat be fabricated over retainers following orthodontic treatment? They can. They can. Yeah. Yeah. Because your your flex tap material is really, it's really kind of like a suck down material that they vacuum form over, or they probably use a pressure, not a pressure pop, but like a biostar to kind of pressure form it over the models. So if you had retainers, um, you could put the retainers over the models and then fit this over there. But the flex tap is rigid enough that it it frankly acts as a, a retainer, in my opinion. Um, and that it may not be necessary to put them over retainers. But if that's your preference and that's what you've been used to doing, um, it, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, I've just found that when I've done that in the past for um, certain other types of appliances, they, those those Essex retainers or Liberia retainers, they, they start to lose their flexibility when you, you have something thick like a flex tap over it. And then you end up with something that's overly retentive on top of the teeth. Um, so there's another question that says, can you explain that again, specifically, do you have a sleep study before you would use the flex tap? Or did you say that if you use flex tap on someone that snores, see if they can stop snoring and then send them for a sleep study? You know, these are patients, anytime making an appliance, they're already diagnosed with sleep apnea. So I always want a baseline sleep study to, to know yes or no, do you have sleep apnea? And if you do, how bad is it? Because um, from there, you got to decide, are you doing CPAP? Are you doing an appliance? You got to look for other things in their sleep study to determine, is it something that you can treat as a dentist? And in reality, your physician determines that for you, because at least in Texas, they have to send a referral to me and, and orders to treat the patient. So if a patient walked in my door, never had a sleep study, and just said that they snored and needed treatment for it, I usually refer them for a sleep study first to get some diagnostics. And once I see the sleep apnea, the physician wants an oral appliance, I make them appliance. And if it's if it's a flex tap that I'm making them, I, I use the Snorlab app for titration purposes. So I tell the patient, adjust this if you're snoring and you wanna keep adjusting it until all the snoring is gone. And then once the snoring is gone consistently, then I send them back to their sleep physician for a second sleep study. But this is a post-treatment sleep study while they wear the flex tap with, uh, with the sleep study to make sure that the sleep apnea truly is gone. Because your Snorlab app is just a free app that just measures audio. It's really not measuring any respirations or any breathing dysfunction. Um, but it's safe to say that if you're still snoring, you probably still have some degree of sleep apnea. So I like to see that the uh, phone app shows no snoring at least for like five or six nights um, consistently before I send them back for a follow-up sleep study with the sleep doctors. Are there any other questions? Okay, so let's get to the fun stuff. This is kind of the more uh, workflow stuff on kind of how I use it and why this flex tap excites me. Um, I think on some of the slides, I think on the true function slide, it says 14 millimeters, but they recently just updated that to 19 millimeters where you actually have a full 19 millimeters to adjust the jaw. And this is my go-to appliance for anyone that has severe sleep apnea and severe sleep apnea is AHI thirties. I've treated 60 AHIs. I treated 85 AHIs. Um, and these are all people that failed CPAP. And when they fail CPAP uh, and with AHIs that high, sleep apnea that severe, I always tell them my goal is to improve your sleep apnea by at least 50%. Um, and a lot of times my business partner and I, we get 75 to 90 to sometimes 100% on some of these patients. It just depends on what their sleep studies look like. Um, but I always tell these patients, if you don't want to wear a CPAP machine, then getting you 50% better is better than nothing unless these patients want to go through extensive surgeries and hope that uh, that works. Um, and so, so when you have a large range to adjust the mandible, 
um, on a flex tap or really tap appliances specifically. What's really nice about this is that for those of you that have made sleep appliances before, if you're using an appliance that is hinged and you have adjustment mechanisms on the side that you have to adjust, you have to adjust it outside of the mouth before you seat it in the mouth. But on some of these patients, imagine if they get their jaw out by like one inch. I have a patient, I got like an inch and a half of their jaw, but one inch sounds like a lot and it is. But when they have to rotate their jaw to seat this lower appliance, a lot of times that is why they can't get their jaw out as far as they need to be. On a flex tap where you have the adjustment mechanism in the front outside of the mouth, you could actually turn that jaw back all the way to their normal, say like, over jet of, I don't know, two millimeters or whatever is easy for them to get the appliance in their mouth. Once it's in the mouth, you can crank that appliance and protrude out to an inch or very close to their max protrusion fairly easily because you're no longer having to rotate into the mandible. And because this is thinner than most appliances, this is always my go-to purely because of that adjustment range that you can get the jaw out further compared to most appliances. And the picture you see here on the right side, the white one, um, that is actually a MyTap. So that is a, um, a over-the-counter non-custom appliance that I've been using for probably about five years. This is the only appliance we use at, at the research at the dental school. And it, it essentially, you know, it's a boil and kind of suction fitted on top of the teeth. It's very similar to the FlexTap, which is why I'm really excited about the FlexTap because in a couple of slides, uh, I make patients my tap all the time um, when they first see me so they can be treated from day one. And then I transition them to a flex tap. But both of these appliances tend to be my go-to for severe sleep apnea cases, purely because you can bring the jaw back, get seated in the appliance, and then advance the mandible after that. And you're no longer dealing with trying to get the patient to rotate their jaw into the appliance. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and so here's the MyTap, here's the FlexTap, and then True Function um, makes or sells the MyTap as well. Um, here's how the MyTap looks like. Um, and again, I use this on most of my patients that I see when I treat them. But you take it this takes apart just like the FlexTap, where you have a top piece and a bottom piece. And here's a thumb screw that is uh, the adjustment mechanism. You're really heating it in water, placing it over the patient's teeth and adapting it to uh, the interproximal embrasure so you get retention. Once it sets up, it turns white. And then you always make an AM aligner for these patients as well. And anytime you do this, you wanna make sure you get informed consent as well. So even though this is what I would call like a temporary appliance in my practice, anytime I'm making a temporary appliance or any type of appliance, I always get the consent form signed just to make sure you protect yourself in the event that there's any type of bite changes or any adverse side effects. And um, so this is kind of what I call, it's kind of like the Texas two-step. I only have, most of the time, I only have two visits in my practice for these sleep apnea patients. And this is something I, I, I feel very passionate about because, you know, we're in network with most medical plans in our area and the reimbursement isn't the greatest. And so over the years, we've been, we've had this practice for about eight years now. So over the years, we've tried to figure out how to, consistently maintain a high level of patient care to make sure that all the patients are taken care of, but also to minimize how often they're seeing us. And for the last four years, this has been kind of our protocol where off the first visit, you know, we finish these patients in two visits. The first visit they come in, we're doing an exam, we're taking some imaging, and we are typically taking records at the first visit. So if you're making any other appliance, you need a bite registration, you need two impressions. If it's a flex tap, you could skip the bite registration if you're not concerned about how the how the patient's jaw protrudes. Once we take impressions, we make a my tap. So day one, the patient's going home and their sleep apnea is already being treated. We're using Snore Lab. They adjust the appliance. When they come back for visit two, they're getting their final appliance, which in this case, looks pretty much just like a my tap works the same way the patient already knows how to put it in already knows how to take it out they already know how to adjust it and if they have those snore lab recordings we really just replicate that jaw position and and then we see this patient six months later 
unless they have problems, um, then we see them sooner for adjustments. And problems might be, you know, sore teeth. Um, maybe they can't wear the appliance. Maybe it's too tight. Um, at that point, you're just doing appliance adjustments. Um, but you deliver enough of these, you kind of know where to adjust out those areas to begin with so that you have less patients coming back for follow-ups. Um, it's no different than when you're doing composite fillings. Um, you know, not to leave them high and you know where to adjust to minimize how often you're getting post-op sensitivity and stuff like that. But our, our office visits, new patients come in, visit one, they get an appliance, they get impressions. Visit two, they've already adjusted their appliance with the Snore, Snore app. We replicate that position on the final appliance and we send them back to the sleep positions for a follow-up sleep study. Um, so if the patient comes in, like we had a patient this week that came in earlier today, made a my tap, three weeks later getting a flex tap, they're already going back to the sleep position in less than four weeks um, if everything goes well. Uh, there's a question here. Do I charge for the my tap? How much? Is there any patient resistance? Um, so I don't know if I'm at liberty to share fees. Um, I'll kind of share a range of what I know most people charge. I know the MyTaps, um, I think they're around a hundred bucks if you buy them um, to kind of stock in your office. And um, most people will charge anywhere between like 200 to 500. I think I've seen as high as 600. Um, you're really, I think patients, um, you'll get, we used to get some that would push back and over the years, you know, we tell them, hey, this is how, this is our treatment protocol. This is how we do things. We understand this is not, um, you know, maybe not, might, might not be a good fit for everyone. We might not be the right, you know, dental sleep medicine provider for you. Um, so there's certainly other people in our area that can treat these patients too, but we just found that this is what works for us. And, um, and you know, you, you kind of practice different verbal skills, but what I've really found works best is we tell these patients, we want to treat you from day one. You're suffering from falling asleep all the time, from not being able to focus. We want to treat you from day one. And when you come back, you're probably going to be done with treatment when you get your final appliance. You'll see some of these medical plans have like $100 deductible office visits. So if you're charging 200 bucks for a MyTap or 300 bucks for a MyTap, if it's saving them two or three follow-up visits, they're really not losing any money on it. Um, I've just always found when you focus on the money, then you're going to see less case acceptance. Um, so we really just tell them, yeah, this is how we treat our patients. We start you off with this. We take impressions. When you get your final appliance, you're probably not going to see us as often. You're going to get better quicker and healthier quicker. And your MyTap will actually become your backup appliance. Because um, for those of you that have made appliances, I'm sure you've seen those phone calls where the patient's dog chews up their appliance. And then they say, I need another appliance. And when you tell them it's going to take three weeks or four weeks, these patients start to panic because they say, how am I supposed to sleep without my appliance? Because they've gotten used to sleeping so well. They've gotten so much healthier. They want a backup appliance. Um, so that's kind of how we, you know, how we kind of emphasize the MyTab as being beneficial for them. Um, so if my tap, there's a question that says if the my tap works for a patient, why go to the flex tap durability? Well, let's say yes, your flex tap's probably more durable. It's going to last longer. Your flex tap also has like a standard three-year warranty that comes with um, the that comes with uh, comes from the tap company um, airway management. Um, so, and then your insurance also doesn't reimburse for my taps. So that's usually strictly a um, a uh, kind of like a uh, fee for service type of, uh, I guess, uh, service or product. Um, so we always try to get them to go to a flex tap, but we do have some patients that uh, have either very high deductibles um, that they haven't met um, that oftentimes will make them a my tap and as kind of like a trial type of appliance. But we tell them it'll last maybe three to six months if they wear it every night. Um, and we actually get some patients keep coming in just buying my taps instead of getting the final one. So the MyTaps work just as well. Um, and I mean, you're probably not going to get reimbursed as much if you make MyTaps for all your patients versus custom appliance. But that's another benefit of the MyTap is that it's a um, it's an appliance that you can you can offer at a lower fee um, to help your patients out that might be financially um, either struggling or trying to save up for a final appliance. Um, or your cash patients that don't want to pay for a custom appliance because they don't know if it's going to work for sure or not. 
So we do the flex taps as, or we do the my taps as well for some of those patients. But I'll tell you, if you decide to do that, you have to make a very good my tap because some of these patients, if you don't make a my tap that fits well, that functions well, that they will interpret that my tap as, okay, this doesn't work anymore. Um, so you have to make sure you can make a my tap uh, very, uh, very effectively for the patient to where it's comfortable and ensure that it works and it stays in for the patient. So I already kind of talked about some of this, but these are the first visits. This is what Snorlab looks like. Um, so visit one, we take impressions, we make a MyTap as they use Snorlab. This is what the app looks like. You know, night one, you're seeing snoring. Red lines are usually epic noise. Yellow is loud. Green is kind of light noise. And if you see this, you're snoring. You turn the appliance. Now there's less snoring. Usually these lines still indicate snoring. Turn the appliance more. Now you're seeing pretty much no noise. And once I see this, I say, don't turn the appliance anymore and record that position like four or five more nights to make sure consistently you look like this. And then visit two, they get their final appliance. They, they already have an AM aligner, so you don't even need to make another one at visit two. And then if they're doing well with their MyTap, they have the recordings. You're really turning this little screw just like you would on the MyTap to replicate the position on the MyTap. You can measure their overjet and replicate that in the flex tap and then have them do a few more snore lab recordings to confirm that it's still uh, quiet with no snoring. Um, there's a question here that says, do you find that tap appliances help with headaches like an NTI since there's no posterior contact? Um, my answer is gonna be yes, um, but you know, truthfully, it's not just specifically tap appliances. Um, I'm one of those dentists that believe that uh, the clenching and grinding is exacerbated by the sleep apnea. So a lot of times you see these headaches that are, you know, temple headaches, um, temporalis muscle spasms that are purely related to clenching and grinding. Uh, oftentimes these are patients that have sleep apnea. And if you treat the sleep apnea, you decrease the clenching and grinding, and you also see the headaches improve. Um, so it's not, not necessarily that taps an anterior point contact appliance like an NTI that gets rid of the, the headaches. I think it's more so it's treating the sleep apnea that gets rid of the headaches for these patients. And so I'll hand this over to, uh, to Trish. Um, if there's no more questions, um, I think Trish uh, wanted to talk a little bit about some of the promos they had. Um, that's what you, all you guys have been waiting on. I know I'm, I'm not the reason why you're here. It's mainly for Trish's promo. So. And there, there's one more question here, Trish, real quick. Uh, it says, would you make a flex tap for someone who just wants an anti-snoring device or would you insist on a sleep study first? Um, I would always insist on a sleep study first. Um, have I done it on someone who just wants anti-snoring device? I would say yes, but they're my friends and family members that aren't going to sue me if something happens. Um, so you, you kind of pick your patients because um, there's, there are some patients that, you know, there's something called central sleep apnea that you'll see in heart failure patients. That is not something an oral appliance can treat because um, that's more related to um, to kind of heart issues. And you really, the standard of care is a, is a CPAP machine with supplemental oxygen on those patients. So you don't want to be caught treating someone that actually has central sleep apnea and then your appliance isn't really, you know, the standard of care. Um, it's easy to get in trouble that way if uh, something bad were to happen. Is there something similar for kids? I'm going to say not yet. Um, they, they have kind of the, um, what is it called, the myo brace um, type appliances, myofunctional appliances. I think that's currently the only thing that's out there um, that um, I think people claim can help with uh, kids' sleep apnea. I think it really kind of guiding growth at that point um, to help improve the breathing. But I, there's really no uh, tap appliances on the market right now for kids. Um, we're trying to do some research to develop something at the dental school, but there really hasn't been anything uh, funded for studies or anything promising um, to this date. There's another question that says, 
I might have missed something you said. Is this your first step setting up a patient with a temporary sort of device that they will titrate prior to fabrication of the definitive appliance? What is the patient using during device titration? So we make them temporary appliances like a MyTap that they titrate that while the flex tap is being made. Um, and by the time they come back to get the flex tap, they've already found the right jaw position with the MyTap and we just replicate that jaw position. Okay. All right. And we can always continue to answer questions too. So feel free to put those in the chat still while I'm finishing up here. Thank you, Dr. Huey, for joining us. It's always so good to see you. Um, and, and we're thankful to have you this evening and uh, taking your time out of your busy day with your little ones this evening. Um, again, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, if we can support you at all uh, to make that next flex, flex tap or any of those sleep apnea or TMJ appliances, feel free to let us know. Um, there is a QR code on the screen uh, where you can join us. Uh, you can join us and set up a new account if you are not a current client. If you are a current client, let us know and, and we can set you up with a flex tap. Um, Dr. Hugh, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide for me, please. And like he had mentioned, why everyone is here, uh, we have a promo code for the flex tap. So our next 50 flex tap sold are actually going to be at 50% off. So a great special um, first come, first serve, the next 50 using code flex tap 50 on your Rx. Uh, so feel free to get set up so that you can send over uh, those flex taps and we can get those made for you. You'll notice that I also put the link for the new account in the chat uh, if you want to access it that way, if you didn't have that QR code ready. Uh, so we invite you to join us on our social media platforms where we post tech tips, webinars, updates, and specials on everything that's going on. Um, so great way to get a little bit of continuous uh, education as well as uh, updates on our webinars and things like that. So join us there. Our next webinar is going to be regarding all things true function. So our plans for year 25 and our commitment um, as your trusted lab partner. So we hope you'll join us then. That'll be Wednesday January 24th, uh, you'll notice that the link to join is in the chat as well for that. Um, if there's any topics that you ever want us to touch base on, any sleep TMJ practice topics, feel free to put those in the chat or shoot us an email after the webinar. Uh, we're happy to address those in our schedule for next year. We'll e also be emailing out the recording of this webinar. So uh, if you have any questions and want to circle back with Dr. Huey, you'll have all of those, all of that information in your email. I would say by the end of next week, maybe early next week, uh, we'll be sending out that email. Um, so if you have any additional questions for the webinar today, feel free to drop them in the chat and Dr. Hugh can get those answered. And, um, and it was great to have you all this evening and thank you for joining us. Uh, Dr. <clears throat> Dr. Hugh, I just want to, again, thank you very much for your valuable, sharing your valuable uh, expertise, your knowledge and your time, uh, which is extremely valuable. <laughs> Uh, so thank you for, for, for that, for being gracious enough to, to uh, help us. And uh, everyone, thank you for joining us as well. And Trish, wonderful job as usual. Thank you for getting us all organized to, to make this happen. Yeah, thank you, Frank, for having me. Um, my last slide here, I do have my personal email here. So I know sometimes questions don't come up until later. So since they are recording this, Everyone has my personal email here. If uh, you guys have any questions, feel free to email me anytime. Happy to help any way I can. Um, if somehow I don't respond, then just shoot a follow-up email. Uh, I get tons of emails and that I haven't unsubscribed to everything yet. So I'm one of those guys with 90,000 emails that are unread. So sometimes I miss a few emails here and there. So, so definitely email me. I'm very happy to help any way I can. Um, I think there's plenty of sleep patients out there for all of us to treat. So it's a team effort. Um, so anyway, I can help. Um, and I think Frank feels the same too. Frank's been a great resource for me as well. Um, I'm like everyone, we all have trouble cases sometimes and, um, I can call Frank and he can walk me through some things every once in a while. Um, so, uh, Frank's always right. Um, lab's always right. So it's never the last <laughs> well, one. Actually, it's the opposite of that, Doc. Remember, if anything ever goes wrong, it was the lab's fault. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, Frank's your guy. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. It does look Thank like you. there's another question uh, here in, in the box if you have a few more moments. Um, any any tips on how to transfer the MyTap position to the FlexTap? 
Yeah, your my tap. Uh, it's it, you know a lot of times you can you can measure it if you want to be very precise about it. Um, but you'll be surprised. A lot of these patients, even if you switch them from like a uh, say like a tap appliance to like an EMA or herbs to other types of appliances with different adjustment mechanisms. A lot of times I just ask the patient, like, does this kind of feel like roughly where your jaw was um, before? And they'll tell you like, no, I think it was further forward or no, it was, it was, this is way too far forward. So, you know, when I was, I'm still young, but when I was younger, um, I would actually take a periprobe and measure, you know, how far does that top part of the MyTap tray um, how far is that from the bottom edge of the other MyTap tray? And I would replicate that with the whatever appliance I was transitioning transitioning them to. And then you would factor like the thicknesses of the appliances and take that into consideration. But ultimately you get it roughly, you know, in the right position to where it feels about the same spot for the patient. And they're gonna retest this with the Snore Lab app to make sure it's still effective. Um, so you really try to get in roughly the same ballpark. Um, so if you want to be precise, you can measure it. If you're lazy like me, you can eyeball it and ask the patient how that feels. That's how I typically do it. Um, and the patients will kind of guide you where they need to go. So. Right. Awesome, thank you. Um, anyone else have any questions before we end the webinar today? Any last minute dying questions? Just one quick thing. I know we're all uh, getting ready to go. From the lab perspective, Doc, I guess one way to do it would be uh, to take a bio registration with the MyTap in place and then send that to the lab and use the MyTap with the material, you know, uh, in between the trays to the lab and they can possibly mount mount that. You have to send the MyTap device. You That's the downside. The yes. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I can make them a second my tap and send the original my tap. <laughs> that 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 yeah, would be a downside, but it could be a way to be a little a little more precise. Yeah, there's a question here that says, "Why would you not use the flex tap?" Um, so your tap appliances are hooked on to your anterior teeth. So you know if you have a patient with a lot of mobile teeth in the front, yeah, you might want to shy away from a from a appliance that requires retention. Um, so most appliances that are hooked together usually require a decent amount of retention. Um, you have appliances that aren't hooked together, like dorsal type of appliances. Um, those would be my go-to for someone that has mobile teeth. Uh, I don't want to put a lot of force on those teeth. Um, sometimes you have people with, uh, you know, if I see an x-ray, a pano with their anterior teeth, they all have root canals on them and crowns. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know how much ferrule is underneath these crowns. And so I tend to shy away from uh, tap type of appliances in those instances too, because um, I've had I've had had crowns break before at the gum line um, with with a tap appliance before, um, but that was one time in ten years. And when you talk to the patient, the patient says, "Yeah, that tooth was barely could be saved." And you just had a case where a dentist, you know, you know, for lack of a better term, was a little heroic and saved the tooth. But really, that was a tooth that was about to break at some point. Um, so it really had nothing to do with the tap appliance. But sometimes your patients don't look at it that way. Um, if teeth were to break or, or crowns pop off from appliances. So, so the take-home message isn't make flex house for every single one of your patients. It's it's I think there's a lot of advantages, but you still have to kind of figure out appliance design and and the patient's dentition and I still show patients multiple appliances and let them kind of decide um, which one you think is the best for you. Now, if they're severe sleep apnea, I definitely steer them towards a flex tap and, and I tell them why. But ultimately, I try to let the patient pick what appliance design um, they think will work best for them. And to add to that, if you do have a question in regards to retention or things like that, always feel free to write on your lab slip, specifically when you're sending it through function that you want to review with a technician. Um, we can always uh, get on the phone with you and kind of talk once we get um, those impressions in um, or the scans and kind of talk about what design might work best based on that patient's anatomy if you're having any questions on that. So feel free to pick our brands. That's what we're here for, um, just to help making sure that that patient is comfortable um, and treated well. All right.
Well, thank you, everyone. I think yep. I think that's it for the questions. Um, thank you so much for the feedback that few of you have provided. Uh, we hope to see you the end of January on the 24th for that next webinar. In the meantime, feel free to stay in touch with any of us if you have any questions, if you need anything, whether that's clinical or, or just kind of getting set up with your function, feel free to pick our brains and uh, we're happy to assist you with those cases. Awesome. Everyone, thank you again, Dr. Huey. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Totally. Have a good night, thank everyone. Thank you, Trish. You, you as well. Take care. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye.